Gut. Ja. Okay. Hello. In previous videos, we have discussed Kalman filter. One, import, one important thing that we need to notice about Kama filter is that it works only with linear models. So we have here a linear motion model and a linear observation model. But actually these linear models are rare in real life and most of the models are nonlinear. That's why we need a new version from Kalman filter which is called extended Kalman filter. And as you guess, yeah, it's an extended version from Kalman filter. In EKF, we need also to define two kind of models. The first model is a motion model, but it will be now nonlinear. And the second model will be observation model or measurement model or sensor model and it will be nonlinear. To use extended camera filter, one of these models should be nonlinear. So we can have nonlinear motion model with linear observation model, or linear motion model with nonlinear observation model, or nonlinear motion model and nonlinear observation model. It's okay. So if we define the motion model now, it will be defined like that. So x a time step k plus 1 is some nonlinear function of x a time step k plus g times wk. This model is called additive nonlinear model. Why it's called additive? Because the noise component is not a part of this function. If I write the model like that, it will be called non-additive. Non-linear model. Because now, the component is a part of the model. Actually, this is the most popular way to describe the motion model and this is the way that I will use in this video. The observation model can be written as follows is a function of let's say is a function is a nonlinear function h of the state vector at time step k. Usually, the observation model is a kind of additive nonlinear model. So here, the measurement noise is not a part of this nonlinear observation function. As we stated before, these noises are white noises. It means that they are Gaussian distributed noises with mean equal to zero and covariance matrix equal to Q in the case of the process noise and the covariance matrix equal to R in the case of measurement noise. Now let's see how we will use EKF to estimate the state vector X or what is a pipeline of EKF. I'll put here a side because I will need both of those papers in the pipeline. So I will write here EKF. Pipeline. Okay? So, as we said in KF, also EKF involves two kind of steps. The first one is the prediction. 
and the second one is an update step. Now, let's follow the same steps as in KF. The first step was to predict the state vector at time step k plus 1 using the motion model. In EKF, we have now nonlinear motion model. So how can I use it to predict the state vector at the next time step? It's really simple enough. I will say that my state vector at time step k plus 1 given state vector at time step k is equal to function of state vector at time step k. So basically I will plug the previous estimate of the state vector in this motion model. Okay, but what about this noise? This noise, I will plug its mean in the motion model. So what is the mean of this noise? Oh, the mean of this noise is zero. So I'll put here zero. So basically I will replace the value of the state vector with its previous estim previously estimated value, which is the estimated state vector times step k. And I will replace the noise components with their means. And since they are white noises, so their means are equal to zeros. So I'll put here zero. So now I get the predicted state vector. But what about the covariance or the predicted covariance? If you remember together the KF, I needed two matrices. I need matrix A and matrix G in order to calculate the covariance. But now I don't have this matrix. So what I should do? Okay. To solve this problem, first I will write the equation. And then I will tell you how I can solve this problem. So that was the previous nice equation from KF pipeline. But now we need to calculate matrix A and matrix G in some way. Okay, and it's really, really simple. Matrix A will be the Jacobian of the motion model with respect to the state vector at a specific point when xk is equal to and w is equal to zero. So I need to get the Jacobian of this motion model and after getting it I will substitute xk with its previously estimated value, which is the estimated state vector at time step k, and substitute the noise component with zero. And for matrix G, I will get the Jacobian of the, the motion model with respect to the noise components and substitute the value of the state vector with its previously estimated value and the noise components with zero. And we are done. So in KF, I had these matrices and I was able to use them. But in EKF, I will use the Jacobian of the motion model with respect to the state vector to get matrix A and the Jacobian of motion model with respect to noise components to get matrix G. The theoretical reason behind that will be discussed in future videos. So in this video I just want to focus on the practical steps of EKF pipeline. Great. Now let's continue. What about the update step? Okay. The update step of the EKF will be as KF. So let's write it. Come again is calculated according to this formula.
and the update step in EKF is calculating using the same steps as in KF. So for the common gain, common gain can be calculated using this formula. The update step in EKF is the same as update step in KF pipeline. I need the predicted covariance matrix from previous step. Some matrix H, which we called it measurement matrix in KF and measurement noise covariance matrix R. If you look at the observation model of EKF, we can find that there is something called R, which is a process or the covariance of the measurement noise. What about H? H is the Jacobian of the observation model with respect to the state vector at the previously estimated point. So because we don't have this measurement matrix, we will get the Jacobian of the measurement model and we will estimate it at the previously estimated state vector. After that we will have this H and we can calculate Kalman gain. Let's continue the pipeline. It's simple enough. Now the the state vector will be updated using this formula. If you look at the innovation here, which is the difference between the measured signal and what I expect to measure or what I predict to measure. And we can calculate this term by plugging the predicted state vector into the observation model. After doing so, we need to update the covariance matrix using this formula. So this is the EKF pipeline. So as we see, they are quite similar. In the prediction step, I use the nonlinear motion model with state vector substituted by the previously estimated state and zero in the noise components. The predicted covariance matrix is calculated using the Jacobian of the motion model with respect to state vector and the Jacobian of the motion model with respect to noise components. And in update step, I need to calculate the Jacobian of the measurement model with respect to state vector and plugging it in the formula of Kalman gain to calculate Kalman gain and then the innovation can be calculated by the difference between the measured signal and what I predict to measure by plugging in the predicted state vector in the measurement model. So as we see EKF and KF it's quite similar. The only difference is that EKF is used with nonlinear models.